Namaste, everyone, and welcome back home to the Tranibus Kitchen. It is season two, episode six, and we are going to be bringing in an incredible special guest in a few minutes. We have Chef Katie O'Donnell, a new dear friend who I didn't even realize I knew many, many years ago. We're going to dive into all the things, talk all about her cannabis story, her cooking story, how they overlap, and all the things. But first and foremost, we need to thank our amazing sponsor. Thank you so much, Fruit Slabs. Shout out to Fruit Slabs. Fruit Slabs are a kosher certified, organic, natural, no preservatives added, no artificial sugars added, fruit leather. It is fruit, it is cannabis. They come in different flavors. They come in THC, CBD. We are using the THC Fruit Slabs tonight, the Mango Maui Waui. This is what they look like. And they have some coconut in them, which is going to go very well with our special ingredient of the evening, which is going to be shrimp. And we are doing two totally different shrimp recipes, myself and Chef Katie. I decided that I was gonna do another sort of deconstruction and reconstruction of what you would experience with shrimp and pasta. And so I'm doing a shrimp ball and I'm really looking forward to finding out what Chef Katie's making because I actually don't know. I know that it's going to have to do with pasta and shrimp, but that could be many different things. And so we are infusing this with our fruit slabs. It's going to be five milligrams per a ball. We're putting them in the air fryer to make it really easy because I'm infatuated with my new air fryer. And in this recipe is going to be very simple. So we've got about a pound of minced and now cleaned shrimp. We have one package of this already pre-made angel hair pasta that's gluten-free. Uh, I couldn't find vermicelli. If you're wondering, that's why I'm not using them. With the fruit slabs, as you've already seen, we have a couple of baby rainbow carrots that I have already shredded very small. We have some baby bok choy that I have already made shredded and very small. We have a, about a tablespoon or so of some ground black pepper, a little bit, maybe about a teaspoon of some ground ginger, and then we have probably about a tablespoon or so of some ground turmeric. We are putting in about a sheet of dried seaweed. That is going to be our salt. We've got three eggs that we are going to whisk to help us combine these together because we have to hold these together. And then we are going to dip them like our breadcrumbs with seeds. Instead, we're going with hemp seeds and sesame seeds that we have put in here. So for those who are familiar with the Tranibus Kitchen, you know that at this point we are going to send some Reiki into our food and our plant medicine, make sure that we are truly connecting. So I'm going to take off the gloves, which accidentally just got shrimp all over them. <laughs> And uh, if you are at home and you are feeling called to connect to your canvas that you are using or any food that you're eating, this is, whether you want to look at it as a prayer, a connection, um, if you are a Reiki practitioner, you can also send Reiki. It's very simple. Make it your own. There's no right way. There's no wrong way. It's just a simple way to send gratitude and connect to the food. Sending so much love and gratitude to the plant spirit, to fruit slabs, to all who made it possible for me to have all the ingredients here, sending love and light and joy into the food and to the audience and anyone else, especially Chef Katie, who are going to be involved, making sure that all are feeling this beautiful love and that we are grateful for the animals as well that have gone through their life cycle to be here. Thank you so much, everyone. Namaste. And here we go, off to the races. So we are going to bring on Chef Katie, and I can't wait to hear what it is that she is making. Thank you so much for sending that gratitude, Artistic Canama. Always good to have you. Let us bring on... Hold on, don't see them on Instagram. Where did they go?
Sorry, friends, we're trying to get this set up. One down, one more to go. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you, Christian. <laughs> wait a minute. Is it on me? Okay, wait. I see. It is. Flip it. But lower oh. the volume on the other device because there's echo. On your laptop. Lower the volume. On the laptop? <laughs> you want me to... Volume up and then move the Literally to, the, like, the last possible... Amount. All right, does that work? <laughs> yes. Now Did there's no echo. Awesome. Okay. Do you want me to Except flip the camera? Why? <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, except that you have to raise the camera so that I can see her. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Chef Katie. It's so good to Hi. have you here. <laughs> so good to see you again. How are you? I'm well, thank you. So Please. you've been doing a lot of prep work before the show started. Uh, so did you, my understanding. I mean, not as much as how much I kept trying to cheat that one time I was on Iron Chef. They kept yelling at me, telling me to stop doing things because it was nervous energy. It wasn't like I was trying to get ahead. I was just like, I can't stand here not doing something. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to leave some of the shrimp to be cleaned. And then I heard you talking about debating shrimp. I'm like, I'm just going to do all the shrimp right now. <laughs> this is hilarious. Mercury and retrograde communication, because I thought that you were so prepped. And so I freaked out. And so that's why I prepped as much as I did. <laughs> that's amazing. Okay. The good news is that we'll be on time and then we can, you know, just eat. Right. Fair. So, okay. Please introduce yourself to everyone. Tell everyone a little bit about you and what you're making. Um, my name is Katie O'Donnell. I've been a chef for, well, been in the hospitality business for about yeah, 30 years, give or take. Um, I do love seafood. And I thought since I don't love being videotaped, it makes me a little nervous. I thought I'd do something simple. Um, we decided on some shrimp. These are wild caught shrimp from Key West, which I love because I, I go diving down there well, for lobsters, not for shrimp. But, and it's like a free form pesto that we're going to use some um, cannabis butter. And then I'm going to put in some whole uh, roasted, I'm going to pan roast these tomatoes. I'm going to throw some raisins and some almonds, which I've already toasted, which will like give it a little bit more butter. A little bit of tarragon here because it's winter and basil doesn't fare that well. And that's my story. That sounds really, really good. And I look forward to seeing you bring it together. So your cannabis story, I imagine, well, I know a little, I cheated because I know a little bit about your cannabis story, but can you share with everyone how your cannabis story came to be and how it overlaps with your food story? Hold on. Which version of my cannabis story did, did, is it that you think you know? <laughs> does it involve a Grateful Dead concert? Because if it doesn't, uh, then that might not have been really my, my like first one. But No, I don't think it had to do with the Grateful Dead story. Well, see, that's the thing. The first time I had cannabis infused food of any kind was at a Grateful Dead concert in a parking lot on a state down street. Can't imagine a better time. Right. I mean, this is back in like mid nineties and I don't I didn't know how the drugs got into the Bryce Christie treats. All I knew is that I got a pretty high. So um, it was a while before I circled back around to thinking about revisiting that, not just for recreation, but also to uh, make other people happy. So here I am. And you're succeeding in doing just that. And you have quite some time. And so 
when did you decide that you were going to put food and cannabis together? Um, I, I started thinking about it a couple of years ago because um, one of my obsessions about food revolves a little bit around um, food and sex in the kink community and um, not necessarily jumping into a kiddie pool full of spaghetti and marinara, but more as an erotic gesture and um, aphrodisiacs. And for me, uh, certain strains of cannabis have always been very much arousing. So I thought food, aphrodisiacs, cannabis, let's see where this goes. I love that. And uh, it's true. And it's something that we've brought up, actually. We've had a couple episodes on sex, cannabis, and food. So you're a good company. <laughs> uh, what would you say is the aphrodisiac in food that is, like, your go-to? Like, for me, I would say chocolate. I know that oysters are an aphrodisiac, but they don't do it for me somehow. <laughs> yeah. See, that's the thing. Oysters are very particular, you know, um, if it's not your thing, it's not your thing, but chocolate. Oh, I love eating that. Well, right, but, okay, well, but you just don't, you don't get that rush. You don't get that, like, full body temperature rising, blood flowing to regions. You're just like, yeah, I just ate an oyster, and that's, like, the end of it for you. I mean, pretty much. Like, if it was a preparation of oyster that was in a dish that was very moving for me, that mm -hmm. could turn me on. But oysters themselves, no. Okay. I'll take that as a challenge for next time we're in the same city. Open to it. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Christian, I can hear you. For everyone uh, who doesn't know behind the camera, camera is Christian. Christian's one of my best friends in New York. All right. So moving back to your cooking story, let's go way back. Start okay. with the boat. The boat. Um, I, with my other um female friends about four of us who were renting a house at the jersey shore uh we're looking for jobs and i found an ad in the paper that said cook on a schooner live aboard and it said must be amicable amiable and adventurous and i was just like that's interesting and um, I called and they're like, I'm gonna be here tomorrow. And I showed up with like two dozen ears of corn and some Jersey tomatoes. And they were like, get on board. And I was like, what? <laughs> and we we sailed to Cape May, which is just like around this. And we got caught in a storm and I had never had sickness, seasickness before and I did. And then they like open the hatches. They let me above deck, and they're like, "You want a job?" I was like, "Sign me up!" <laughs> I totally just thought I was gonna die, and I didn't. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it wasn't that simple, but I'm a little high, so that's a shorter actually. <laughs> but yeah, that's how I realized the power of food like really connects people. And, and nourishing people and taking care of people and giving them strength and showing them love. It's, it's a big deal. Which so cannabis does it. too. Yes. So they naturally go together. They go together. So after all of that, how did you get from that to David? Um, Yeah, I do in the middle. <laughs> um, 
I thought I was supposed to be looking at you. I'm supposed to be looking at the... <laughs> uh, I, I, I applied for a job and oh, <laughs> um, at ESCA and um, I didn't hear anything for six months and I got a phone call out of the blue and Max and Max like, basically, you know, I wasn't going to call you because you're a chick, you know, I mean, basically. But, uh, you know, you worked on the sailboat, so I'm kind of curious. And the person that I did hire didn't work out. So, like, you're up. I was like, wow. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> wow. What a, what a tech. <laughs> um, you know. For the days, my friend. That is just, uh, you know, look, I'm not impervious to making uh, occasionally a judgment call on that, but like the way that the men are in the camp in the cooking industry and culinary is just gross. It's yeah. just gross. Um, not all of them, because now I'm here. <laughs> but, <laughs> ultimately. Um, okay, so that's horrible. So 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 you said yes anyway. Yeah. Um and I worked there for almost eight years. And uh I learned a lot. Now I'm done. <laughs> I don't want to go back into a brick and mortar restaurant. I don't blame you. I mean, you did many, many years of some of the best restaurants, and then you started uh, the nonprofit, right? Uh, yes. In June of 2020, I came back to Brooklyn after being in Jersey with my mom for three months. And we fed about 1,500 people a week, which was pretty good considering social distancing and like just everything. Um, we did that for a little over a year and then we were we disbanded due to uh, situations beyond our control, which was sad. So now I'm looking to continue in the nonprofit sort of food security world, but hopefully find a job where I get at least paid something. That makes sense, you know, but it shows how much of a big heart you have and how food for you is more than, you know, that's that's where, in my opinion, the art comes from is also how we, we care about it and where it goes and who it goes to. Yeah. So when do we start cooking? You should start cooking. <laughs> I was, I was, I, I, I've like already do majorly. Do He's like, I'm four minutes away from food on my plate. No, not, not, not that, not that good. But uh, I was letting you have your your high smoking moment. Aww. Plus, you've been a sous chef, so you know how to whip something up in five minutes. Yes, absolutely. That's um. So, did you enjoy culinary school? Uh, wait, culinary school? Did you, you do that program? Are you about me? No, I'm not telling lies about you. It's no, I'm, did I'm you do sorry. Program? I'm talking to the camera person again. Um, I went to the Natural Gourmet, which is a. I mean, they do have a chef's training program, but it's like a four month program. It's not associate's degree. A lot of culinary students are associates of it. I didn't even get an associates. It doesn't matter. I didn't finish. I left CIA. Oh, yeah? Good. See? Good for you. Wait, so am I supposed to be looking over there? You're looking at me. You're doing a great job. But you should be cooking. <laughs> Christian, stop distracting her. We're working with studio kitchen. Like, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. I didn't think you could hear me. Okay. Yes, of course oh. I can hear you. <laughs> can everyone All right. else. Back to us. So, so I mix doing? everything together. It's um, I'm allowing this to sort of marinate and soak in. And I think I'm actually going to add an, diff add an additional dry ingredient. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. I'm going to add some passion rolled oats to make this a little bit easier to combine. 
This is my like go-to right now fix for when something is a little bit liquidy, but I want to make something less so. I oh, add yeah. rolled oats. That makes sense. Do you have a story of like what your biggest disaster in the kitchen has been? Because we've we've all had at least one, right? Um. Well, I was actually um, doing a tasting for Steven Star, and they put me on an Amtrak train from New York to Philly and put me up at the Hilton in Philly. And I worked in the kitchen for a day doing prep, and then the day of the tasting, I just bombed. Like, you got nervous? Bombed. And I, like, my, the first, I forget what the first course was. First course wasn't a disaster, but the second was a duck riette, and I had made crispy duck skin, like, crackers to eat with the riette. And somehow, and I had this, like, sour cherry mustarda and I was like quenelling it on a little piece of wood and I sent it out without the skin. Oh no. Uh, oh my god. And it, it 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 derailed me so bad that I fucked up the next course uh which was a fish course and I just it was it was just a disaster and, and it just got it just went downhill because one thing led to another. Next thing you know, there's just no going back from it. It was a mess. And I, like by the time I walked out of there, like the bus boy was the only one left in the dining room. Like two stars. None of his people even talked to me. There was like eight of them there. I was like, yeah, good job. Oh, that sounds like that stung. Uh, yeah, you know. But um, it doesn't matter. You still got an Iron Chef. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> so I mean, obviously, I want you to talk about Iron Chef, <laughs> which I, I warned I warned you about. I warned you about. Um, well, I mean, I don't think that um, non disclosure agreement really applies anymore. But they um, they give. They give each team three possible ingredients, and then you have a month to recipe test three separate menus for three possible ingredients. And then you send in your list of ingredients for each possible ingredient slash menu. So the day of, the only thing is which of the three menus have you already written and tested are they going to ask you to cook? Wow, that's for a moment I was like, that's really generous of them. And then I was like, actually, no, that sounds like total chaos. <laughs> like a huge I mean, amount of work. Well, it, it's not that it was chaos because we knew it was gonna be one, you know, something. You, you know. But um it was just kind of funny because it was like, okay, well. Oh it's just, it's definitely not a secret ingredient. Everybody fucking knows that. As a kid, I did not know that. Okay, well, I mean, sure. I was 10. <laughs> That's fair. I mean, not, I was older once I saw that episode, but yeah, I mean, initially. Okay, so, so then you get there, and I mean, it's like, how many days does it take to film it? Is it really filmed in one day? Half a day. We had the afternoon. We had the afternoon clock. Bobby Flay, that fucking pussy. He went up against someone that morning and lost. I'm sure I I had a lot of joy in that, but I I'm such a diehard Morimoto fan. Uh, in general, you know, I don't know Bobby Flay. I don't get good energy from Bobby Flay. No, not so much. I love uh, Morimoto. I really do. Okay, I mean, I, I think, that. you know, it's unfor it must be unfortunate to meet him in a Hollywood context, you know? Because, like, of course, as a kid, I had that, like, 
you know, wonder, and there wasn't like any sh of that reality shattered for me just yet, you know. Um, yeah. And then I actually went to his restaurants and I met him in person. And then I was like, oh, he must, he seems really, really nice. And I get a very good, you know, energy. But I imagine the experience. Was that the first time that you had met him? Was through through that day? Yeah, that was Morimoto. Yeah, and then I met him a couple times after that, and he he always he's like, "Good battle, chef. Good battle, chef." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Fucking Morimoto just called me chef. I need a minute." <laughs> I would have freaked out. I mean, he's I incredibly I gifted. He's so gifted. Um, I, I would say that Morimoto's restaurant in New York is probably still to this day my favorite, if not at least in the, like my top three favorite restaurants. What would you say is your favorite restaurant right now? Well, I mean, I haven't been to a restaurant in two years. Per that is not true. We met at a restaurant. Yeah, but that's different. I mean, I haven't been to like, I've been to like, very few. I'm not going to compare them to each other because of, you know, what we're going through. That's fair. It's, it's not the same. No, I, I, know. I don't know. And I haven't been back to, like, anything more than once or for a second time because then the next time you think you're going out, another COVID thing hits. Alright, hold on. So... Catch us up. It's looking good over there. Here the trip. I threw the um, we're dry roasting the tomatoes because it's winter and tomatoes in, in the winter don't have a whole lot of taste. We threw some raisins in there because you're doing this this uh, fruit thing that I don't have any of, but I'm I'm going with the same flavor profile. So I put some golden raisins in there, Yum. and then I have um, a little bit of tomato paste I'm going to put in there, and then a little bit of white wine. I put the shrimp shells behind me in a little pot. So I have a little stock going, so I can also use that. Oh so yeah, this was not just white wine. This was a leftover from New Year's Day. I like I like your method that you're going. You know, full full ingredients like. The importance of full cannabis using the full plant is so important, and that's so clever to use the shells as a stock. I actually, I don't think I've done that. Oh, totally. Yeah. I and mean, that's so. The most of the weed butter that I, or homegrown, and then a mix of shake from you know your leftover flour that you know whatever it is you have at the time. But man, those, they say it's really low THC and, and, and it could be, but it still tastes so good. Just even the herbaceous of it, of it is just so amazing. It's insane. I, so it's I like, love it. I love it. Like it tastes good and you might get high. Oh, I'm fucking in. You're like, <laughs> so so when you say butter is your favorite infusion? Um, yeah. It's, it is. I like my butter. I respect that. Butter is amazing. Yeah. I've, uh, I've gotten pretty far in my recipe, but I, I slowed up just uh, a little bit, but I am sort of testing time here. I took all the ingredients put them in the bowl, they've been marinating. I got the texture and consistency that I want, so it'll form a bowl, this is what it uh -huh. looks like. So the rolled oats look, worked really, really well. Wow. And now I've minced up my fruit slabs. So we're putting that in here. We do that last minute because when they get wet, it's already going to start to change the profile. So I'd rather them be as least wet as possible. And then we're going to dip them in this combo of hemp seeds and sesame seeds. And 
and get them on in the air fryer. It's a pretty simple recipe as well. So you love your air fryer, huh? I, I don't have one, but I everyone who I know has one love them. If I had to marry an object, I would marry an air fryer. Wow. I am legitimately in love with it. Also, That's fierce. I will disclose something, which is that in the kitchen, I tend to get very excited about things for a while and obsess over it, whether it's ingredients or tools. And then I eventually kind of get over it. But I have to say this dehydrates, air fries, roasts, something else that I'm blanking on. It's like absolutely incredible. It's worth it. All right. So I'm mixing this all together. And it's gonna look pretty too, because I have all these different colors in here. I wish I got to get some really good shrimp, but I just got like a fresh, previously frozen. Yeah, I kind of got the, yeah. I mean, similar, I had to go to Whole Foods, which isn't really saying much, but it's we're so privileged to have it. Oh, 100%. Mine's from Whole Foods too. It's just frozen. <laughs> yeah. I didn't pick it up. No, not necessarily worth it. So we've touched upon, you know, this deep connection that we both have with cannabis and with food and nurturing people. Mm -hmm. You know, as you know, I look at this all from a spiritual wellness perspective of that I feel that I'm legitimately fueling myself and others with unconditional love, with joy, with nutrition. And I feel like there's true energies that each of these embody. Like I had a chef at CIA that said to me, you need to talk to your fish. And everyone was like, what? <laughs> it was like, you need to talk to your fish. Like you touch it, like you are making love with, to your fish. And I was like, you know, okay. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm into it. I'll, I'll do it. You know, <laughs> but, but through my spiritual journey, I've come to realize that when I take these moments, I'm really giving gratitude that I'm really connecting to the spirit of the animal, of the ingredients, the fact that the earth and people had to, do labor and hopefully love to create this possibility. Um, do you feel some sort of connection in this way or that you would refer to as like a deeper intrinsic way with food and cannabis? Yeah, ab absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I definitely have respect for all living beings. I mean, like, even I, we were pulling up bamboo not that long ago and it's invasive and it shouldn't be there, but like, I'm still like, I'm still killing a plant, you know, but also I'm not vegan. I'm not a vegetarian, but I do, you know, choose my battles, but like something like cannabis, it's like such a, a it, it's like, it has so many other possibilities. You know, it's, it'd be one of the things that's like, do I, you know, pull up the bamboo to let the cannabis live or is the bamboo pretty? Well, the bamboo might be pretty or, you know, but it, it's not going to ease people's pain. It's not going to make people, you know, potentially happier and healthier in their lives. It's kind of. I hear you. Yeah. It's, it's a cycle of life kind of thing. Yeah. Um, you got a panda, which None of us should be harboring a panda, as cute as they are. Correct. And so I want to go back to talking about cannabis, food, and sex in the kink community. Yeah! Um, so I have to say, like, it's probably been in the past maybe, like, five years that I actually was told for the first time 
that cannabis with food was a part of the king community. So there may be certainly people who don't know that and they don't maybe have that understanding. So for those who don't, would you feel comfortable sharing what that means for you, what your understanding of, of how food and cannabis comes into the king community and I'm imagining that it's significantly more meaningful than, than even just like having cannabis and having food. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, the, the so the cannabis opens your senses, and when you're embracing foods that are aphrodisiac in nature, they be intense. So, so like if you're open and aware, and you're listening to your body, and you're really paying attention to what's going on around you. You really speak in that moment and you bite into you know a piece of fish that's that's using some ginger and lime and a little you know it's a little spice but then maybe it's got some cilantro and it, it's like it hits every part of your mouth and then then your body's like whoa that was amazing that was like you know fireworks in my mouth how come food doesn't always taste that way well, sometimes because you're eating shitty food, but also sometimes <laughs> just not listening to your body. <laughs> that too. So, um, I mean, to me, that's part of that. Um, yeah, thank you for sharing that. I definitely align with the all the senses and i mean to me i find food sexy like cooking with someone is one of the most intimate things in my opinion that you can do yeah definitely you know i just didn't have kind of like how you know i've always been trans but i didn't know what trans was for a long time it's like i always felt that way i mean maybe not always maybe not when i was like 10 but when i you know <laughs> as i as i started to uh cook and experience cannabis you know in my in my adult life I definitely was clueless as a kid. The well, first time I tried to make pot brownies, um, it was kind of sad. Um, someone I went to high school with uh, died a couple weeks before high school graduation in a car accident. And my parents let my brother chaperone a party. And I... <laughs> Someone was showing me how to make pot brownies and, you know, we had like strained out the actual weed and thrown it in the trash can. And then my parents had these um, Rottweiler, Black Lab, uh, Boxer, I don't know, they were just, they were big and they were beautiful, they, and, but, but kind of stupid dogs who ate it out of the trash and then ended up throwing up all over the oh. kitchen floor. No. <laughs> Were they okay? Yeah, thank God. And yeah, we didn't. They didn't even have to go to the vet. But um, I got I got in a little bit of trouble. But I so I was like, yeah, you know, <laughs> maybe I'm not going to try that again for a while. <laughs> you know, I mean, and then, you just lock up the dogs. Well, I know, but I mean, but then it was, you know, it was a couple of months from me moving to New York City to go to art school. So I was just like, I'll just find drugs. <laughs> I'll, I'll find the weed. It's really cool. It's, uh, it's not hard to find in New York. Well, the sad thing was, it kind of was a pain in the ass because most of the, like, the art students and whatnot wanted, were like, wanted to smoke weed all the time. They didn't want to smoke weed. Oh, true time. The years. <laughs> the decade. Yeah, I'm talking like 1993, 94. So, you know, I mean, but I, I found my pot smoking friends. You know, but then I got that job on the sailboat and I was uh, drug tested by the Coast Guard. So I didn't smoke pot for many years, which is fine. Said, said me never. <laughs> <laughs> if you were on a desert island and you could only have three ingredients with you, what would you have? These are, this is it. 
there's no other option. This is what you're having for the rest of your life. Um, okay. Cannabis. This is why we're friends. Continue. Um, <laughs> I mean, maybe, uh, oh, coconut for hydration. Smart. Okay. We're getting statistics. Um, we're getting a strategic here. And and then I'm I mean they say scurvy's not a thing anymore, but I'd pick any sort of citrus, preferably a lemon or an orange or a lime to help prevent scurvy, because I don't know where else we'd be getting our vitamin C. Well no, I actually I would imagine cannabis has some vitamin C in it. But I don't know how much, but uh if you have the raw leaves, I believe. Right. I don't actually know the exact amount. Yeah, I think it's different. Uh, it's good. I've rolled right, up my how, rolling up the balls. They're medicated. They're large. They're happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, speaking of. Um, and we're going to plug in the air fryer. What's amazing about also an air fryer, like you don't have to preheat it. You plug it in and you press start. Nice. Yes, they are amazing. <laughs> I'm reading the uh, comments from people. How is yours going? Oh, we are. Uh, it's smelling delicious. It's looking delicious. Let's oh boy. Here. Fish. I've never used it for the fish setting. 10 minutes, that cannot possibly be accurate. I'm going to do it, but I feel like that cannot be real at 350 that seems not possible right uh, it, um, 350 it, 10 minutes even in sort right. of convection state that seems fresh yeah there's only settings this is uh it's an air fryer mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. well i don't know I get a little lost at that point because I don't own one. Wait, uh, they're, and you they're wanna, new to me. This is how, this is an example of the technology in my kitchen. Uh, my technology is not ideal either. Yes, I, I feel like people imagine that everyone who's had chef training has like incredible, you know, expensive equipment, and it's just not true. So I'm happy that we're. More, uh, showing right, but yeah, this is my no. It's I don't even have it plugged in. This is my microwave. <laughs> Wait, show me your microwave? <laughs> I'm look. It froze. Welcome, Freddie. Welcome, Brandy. Welcome, everyone. It's all snacks. Popped I in. Namaste. Oh, we've got you frozen on the uh, on Instagram. This is a very common issue. Uh, what you will have to do is leave Instagram and come back. Oh wait, no, don't. It, it's working. You're back. That looks good, Chef. How much longer until you're done? Right. See, I told you you were going to be ready me. when you are. <laughs> <laughs> Notice how I didn't ask you to do a competition. I that, it, that, you, that the time was going to go by quick, so I tried to make something super simple. It, it did. It, it did go by fast, and you did well. I mean, mine are in. If this is actually done in 10 minutes, I mean, I'll kind of eat my shirt, but I imagine that it'll be done pretty quickly. We'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah we're chilling. I'm going to uh, just do some sanitation here. That was one of the hardest things when I was in, doing culinary school was food safety. Oh my God. I almost failed that. 
the test. You know what? It's, so crazy. it's so crazy that they change the fucking rules and the laws all the time, but you never have to get recertified. So you only know if you're one of those assholes who has got nothing better to do than troll their website all the time to see if they updated some sort of law or be there one day when they show up and they're like, oh, this is a different boy violation. And you're like, what? And they're like, yeah, huh? And you're like, nah. And they're like, yeah, last, as of last year. And you're like, oh, shit, all right. Like, it's crazy, you know? It they is. To fail. I think it's also, you know, they learn new stuff all the time. Oh, I love your faith in humanity. Someone has to. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I mean, I have to say, like, I learned, I felt like, see, the thing was, because I started in professional kitchens, young, like, you started professional cooking before going to school. Like, I found the class harder than what I actually know food safety is. Like, I... I was obviously right. taught food safety the second I started a job because I can't touch food without knowing the basics of food safety, which is really simple. Don't put raw things together. Right. Yeah, it's really not that hard. Unless it's raw vegetables, since it's all vegan. Right, but only if they've been triple washed because, you know, it's on That's the true. True. I am bad about triple wash. I forgot the card. I, I usually double wash. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. The camera person's getting spicy over here. Yeah. I, I forgot the lemon juice. I was going to... But we're, we're not, like, done done, so I didn't really technically forget it yet. I just you didn't play it. it. Exactly. It's never, it never go, it's never done until it's played it. I can't believe this man is this person is doing that. She starts up rolling. This is not done. I'm going to have to turn it on the drug. I know there's a lemon seed in that. Because I smoke juice on my glasses. I think we need to smoke some more weed. I was about to do that until I started to have to panic about this cooking properly. Because I had salmonella. Oh, I found it. Look, I found the lemon seed. Oh my God, I can't believe I found that. Chef, is you that found... why you put your glasses on? Yes. You found the lemon seed. Yes. Oh, you yeah. found the lemon seed in that entire... I... I can't believe it. I know. Apparently, I'm either perfectly high or high, or not high enough. I don't know. How do you decide? I would say it would. You're perfectly high when you know that like everything is great and it's at your ideal. I'm getting. I'm gonna get. Come uh, here. What is Oh my the... god. Oh. Actually, you know what? I want to talk about the rock shrimp. Yep, rock mm. shrimp. Howdy, E Wolf. Welcome. Uh, I mean, not the rock shrimp. You, it was rock fish, wasn't it? But you. Oh, could... you mean uh, wreck fish? The yes, Iron the wreck Chef. fish. Wreck fish. Iron Chef episode. Wait, honey, can you? What do you want? I wonder if your episode is still up somewhere. Um, it, it you actually have to pay for it, but it's like three dollars. Last I heard, which you, you know. say thirty dollars? No, three. It's like three dollars and twenty five cents to watch like one episode. Yeah. Um. But also, I have a DVD of it. If you still have a DVD player, I can always I mail it to you. <laughs> I do have a DVD player. <laughs> no, even better. When I when I come home next, we're gonna get really baked and watch it. Yes. And have a really bizarre trip down memory lane for both of us. Wait, oh, do you remember yeah. what year that was? I'm trying to remember to see how old I was. 
Um, Christian looked it up and told me, but I don't even remember. This entire episode is going to be like a back channel of commentary from Christian. <laughs> Where's my joint? Where'd it go? <coughs> mm-hmm. Oh, this one? Oh, new one? Very good. So, um, what are we making? Our, oh my God. And so, there's another funny thing. I will see. I can text it to you. I have one snippet from that Iron Chef thing where it's, you know, Pasternak is the chef and Billy Gallagher, who is the chef at Becco, and then myself as the two sous chefs. And I have a bunch of leeks that I'm walking to the sink to wash, and he's got some petty pan squash. And I walk up and he's there, and I was like, hey, handsome, how's it going? And he's like, patty pan, patty pan, patty pan, patty pan. And I just start laughing. And it's just this, like this funny thing. And fucking Alton Brown's like, oh, looks like the challenger side's got a little something hot going in the sink. Or I don't forget what the, what the fuck he said. But I was like, oh, my God. I was like, of the things that they caught on camera, they caught me being flirtatious. With someone I wasn't legitimately flirting with because he's like a big brother to me, but regardless, it, like that was on national television. And my mom was like, Oh, Katie. <laughs> I was like, What? It's Hollywood. What did you think was going to happen? On of that? course, they were going to leave that in. So I want to get like, go really into the grind of this. After the episode, what was life like? Like, what did it feel like to actually be on Iron Chef? And then everything that came after that. And then how did you feel about the edit? Because obviously they do an enormous amount of editing. To an well, um, since I was the sous chef and not the actual challenger, the problem was my boss was pissed. Kept saying, it's rigged, it's rigged, it's rigged. We our our non-disclosure agreements were for 365 days from the time it was filmed because they had they could potentially not even use it in that in that season and they might save it for the next one and they go in like six month cycles or something. So you're not allowed to say who won or who lost or anything about what happened. And my boss is back in the restaurant saying that's fucking rigged and this and that. And he was supposed to do food and wine New York City with Morimoto, like oh, not even a month after we taped that episode, and he refused to go, and he sent me instead. And like literally, the people there, like even the like, when I walked in, and his assistant or whom someone called ahead and said Dave couldn't go, and they were sending me it, and they were basically like, you. <laughs> you don't you don't have to be here like you don't even matter like you're like you can like there's a table over there if you want to go you know put your little things on it was the weirdest fucking dismissal where i was like whoa because i mean i get it morimoto's like i'm not having like i'm not being treated this way because this person got their tiny little penis stepped on you know what i mean like but yeah, but so, I mean, I had brought all this stuff for, like, raw fish, crudo, and all this stuff, and they're like, oh, yeah, you're in the table in the corner over there. Just keep just keep giving out food and smile and nod. And I was just like, what the fuck? This man in their fucking bullying complexes. So then the episode came out, and what did you think of the episode? Um, it was hysterical that, you know, seeing that moment at the sink that I didn't even remember. And, um, other than that, I was like, all right, you know, like it was solid, just not, you know, would have been nice to win, but I I don't really feel like other than my boss being asked her the whole time, it didn't change my life that we didn't win. 
you know, like the fact that we lost versus if we had won, I don't think would have made that much of a difference in my life at that point. Was it exciting? Did you, were you, did you feel proud? I mean, that's like a big, big no, of course. I mean, I was, I was super excited, but then also like, they're like, you'll get fined a million dollars if you say anything to anyone. So like, by the time the year was over, I was like, so like, oh God, that's right. I so forgot that I had this amazing thing that I wasn't allowed to talk about. Now I can finally talk about it. And I'm just like, oh God, like, <laughs> you know, but it was crazy. I mean, it, it was awesome. It was so much fun, but, um, you know, having lost and having worked with a sore loser was kind of took a little fun out of all of it. Honestly. But well, other than that, it was awesome. And then they called me to be on Chopped, and I was like, uh, no. You said no. No, I was like, nope. Why? No, like, no, because, like, I, you're, you're, you're by yourself. And I'm like, I am not. I'm just like not out to convince anyone that I'm perfect and I'm definitely not out to put myself out there and potentially be like a total disaster and have someone profit from that. You know, like win or lose, someone's making more money off of me than I'm making on myself. And I know I want no part of that culture. Blame you. Well, I'm glad that at least overall that experience was positive. So, yeah, overall. You know, I feel like I, you know something that my mom has always said to me is it's equally as important to know what you don't want that it is to know what you want. And so it's like having that one experience, like if you had it and then you said yes to Chopped. Right. It all, it all played out. And so are you interested in continuing to do restaurant consulting or no? Um, I, I'm trying to keep it open right now for, for the money, but um, I really want to stay in food relief. Is that the air fryer? Yeah, we're going to see what the actual truth is here. I mean, oh, I the expect, moment of truth. I don't expect the bottom ones to be done, but I really don't even think. I don't know. I'm really learning I how we do I mean, They are like significantly more cooked than I thought. I almost like I'm compelled to cut one. What was that, Chef? I'm sorry. Mm. I mean, they actually might be cooked. I mean, I changed the temperature. I changed it to 450. No, they look like... I'm going to have to cut in the one. There's only... That's the only way to know whether they're... Yeah. You don't have a thermometer? Um... The answer is that I'm pretty sure I recently bought myself one upon realizing I didn't have one. And I have no idea where it is right now. Oh, that's fine. No, I mean, I just, yeah. Um, but that is a totally rational question, and I should definitely get one. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure I did. My whole kitchen is um, like completely reorganize it. It's kind of in chaotic state. I'm going to put these back in and hope that this is actually cut. opening the window. Uh, I smoked, smoked the kitchen out a little bit. Yeah, no, I had to turn the fan on. Um, all right. 
I'm gonna cut into this and see if it's cooked. All right. Part is, <laughs> I minced the shrimp so small, and that's what I'm trying to see what the coloring is, of course. So like, <laughs> it's really good. But it's all, like, everything is so mixed in, I can't even, like, find the shrimp. Okay, no, I can find it. Unbelievable, this might actually be cooked. I really don't understand half air fryers. Like, I, I mean, this is my first time using it. This is terrible. You should make this. What? <laughs> yeah, this is cooked. I'm blown away. All right. Let's see what else we have. Are you ready to munch? Mm hmm. We have to um, take a picture first. It's a tradition on the show. Okay, so what do we do? We take a... You take your food and you put it in your hands and then you bring it with you to the camera and then we're going to take a picture and then I'm going to take a picture. You have to be in it. Your face. <laughs> Fresh it, back up. <laughs> so you have to back up. Back up. Wait, officers to back up? No, no, Christian, there we go. Okay, now, Chef Katie, go to your food. With your face. I'm trying to take a picture of us with our food. Christian, you have to back up. This is like people over 40. What the? Sure. I've had plenty of people. Okay, yes. Oh my God. I'm just gonna okay, get down the ground. No, 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 you're, you're in the exact spot. Just don't move, don't move. Christian, nope, I'm don't not gonna move. move. I'm not gonna move. We did it. I don't even know who I'm supposed to look at. You did. You did great. Mission accomplished. Oh my god. Oh, Jamie, oh you are a patient, amazing human being. Okay. Get up here oh, and no, eat I don't your dinner. Move. No. <laughs> I really like how these came out, actually. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I need So fruit slabs works really well with this. That's that's really cool. Like I I had no idea that that's where you were going with that. So I think we would both agree that coconut and mango can go very well with shrimp in the proper plating, right? Yeah. Um so I knew that those flavors would work really well. I figured if I minced it small enough, it would just basically be like little pieces of meat. And right. it kind of hides in there until you notice it. And um, it just so happens that one of their claims to, fl to fame with this edible is that no matter the heat, like it will not melt. I've actually done melt tests with boiling water and also things, and it takes a really long time for it to even remotely dissolve. That's kind of crazy. So, whereas there's a lot of concern and worry, right, when we're cooking with cannabis, of course, to cook off the terpenes and the flavonoids and everything when we turn up the heat, this is something that, of course, will also, you know, inevitably lose some potency with everything, but right. potentially not as much, I find. And it doesn't, it just kind of holds and stays like here i'll show you see that orange thing in the tip there that's one of them yeah it's like looks exactly the same yes so they came out a little happy how's yours um pretty damn good i have, when i saw you getting all fancy I threw some saffron and a little bit of white wine and added that um, to the pasta. 
It's pretty damn good. And I just added the cannabis butter at the end. So it's, you're going to be super stoned later. Yep. <laughs> Do you know how many milligrams went in there? I, no, I, I don't know. That's always the question with the homemade stuff. I guess if I ended up doing it a lot, I'd test it maybe. This is so good. Well, that looks amazing. I wish that I was eating it. <laughs> Thank you so much for being a special guest for this week's episode. It was super fun. And I look forward to like being able to actually cook in person. Yes, definitely. Next time you're out this way. It'll be super fun. Can you please let everyone know if they want to get in touch with you, especially if they want to hire you, what is the best way to do that? Um, well, my Instagram is uh, Chef Life by the Sea, which I'll, I'll put in the comments. Um, that would be the easiest way. Maybe I'll be able to convert you over into the uh, cannabis culinary realm. Thank you so much. Thank you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Thank you, Christian. Enjoy the food. All the love. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. That was so terrifying. <laughs> You did very well. and, uh, oh my god, that was so terrifying. I'm so sorry. I thought it was like killing it with two cameras, but like it was just a laptop. Know. I've never we're over 40. I'm everyone so sorry. Everyone here is loving and supporting you. All right, everyone. Oh we will see you all, all right. next week for another episode, episode seven. It's going to be the first one of the month of February. And we are going to be here, if I recall correctly, with Maggie Fromm, who is the founder of the Woke Community, who I love deeply. I'm a part of the Woke Community, and I look forward to having her here and um, making some casseroles, which is what we're most likely going to be doing. So I love you. I love you. Thank you. And we'll see you all next time. Love you. Namaste. Namaste. I love you. I love you.